Hey there, crazy kids. I am the good old gamer. And welcome back to the secret world. We are going in for our weapons training. We just met the big boss, Richard Sonic, in the previous video. So now, we get to go to weapons training. Mm, yep, we want to enter the crucible. This is where we get to pick our weapons to start with. We can test out any of the basic weapons available in the game. Figure out which ones we want. I already know which ones I want, so it's not going to be too much of a big deal for me, but... Let's check this place out. Christ almighty, we've got our work cut out for us. The Crucible is my house, and in my house, my word is law. Forget your mother's teat. From now on, this is your home. This is where you learn to stay alive. You've come here an empty slate. You have potential, that's why you were recruited. But that potential needs strict guidance. You're a loaded weapon, and if you don't learn to control yourself and channel your powers, you'll end up hurting yourself or others. You have the ability to manifest anima, your life force, in the physical world. To enhance your strength, your physical attributes, to do magic. Martial magic, none of that fairy stuff. <laughs> Whatever trinket you hold in your hand is merely a way to direct your powers. We don't do magic wands here. Through your weapon, you channel and wield your magic. And never mind why this power has been awakened in you. You're not the only one, and you're not the chosen one. You're part of an army. Our army. And from now on, you'll do what you're told. It's the way of the Templars. Consider this your playground. It's not like being out in the front lines, but it's close enough. We have a choice of weapons for you to practice with. Try as many as you wish. You want to make sure you're comfortable with your weapon. It'll be the only thing between you and a trip to the graveyard. Those things are called Rakshasa, the basic hellhounds. We keep them chained. They used to make such a mess of the new recruits. Use them for target practice. Don't worry, they don't feel a thing, and they're unworthy of mercy. Spend your time in the Crucible well. There's no point rushing things. Out there, the demons aren't chained up, and you don't have me around to save your sorry ass. Go on, get started. I'll offer some guidance along the way. All right, so basically, he just told us, hey, you're playing an MMO, and because you're playing an MMO, you could be a healer or a tank. Or DPS, you could have defenses, you could have buffs, and blah blah blah, and obviously you can have magical attacks, because that's part of being in an MMO. <laughs> and so that's basically what he said. Um, and that's how he explained how things like the assault rifles can give healing. It's because they're magic, like sort of, I don't know what you call them, talismans in a way. Even though this game also has talismans that are your gear. Instead of armor and stuff, they uh, they act as armor or whatever instead of your clothing. But anyways, we'll get into that later. Um, in these weapons cases, there's a basic type of every weapon in the game. There are nine weapons. There's blades, um, fists, and hammers for melee. There's assault rifles, pistols, and shotguns for guns. And then there's three different magics you could have, direct magic types, chaos, um, blood magic, and elementalism. And they all work um, in different ways, they lean towards different specialities, you can mix and match any type of two you want, some will be a better, or not necessarily better, but uh, easier combination to work together than others, but they all can work together, you can make them all work 
So what you want to do while you're here in the training room is to mess with all the different weapons, see which ones you like, see which ones you like the look of, see which ones you like the abilities of, see which ones work together, and see which type you want to lean towards. Um, even if you play solo in this game, which I'm going to play a lot of solo in this game, there's going to be rare, if ever, times that I group up, because I don't tend to do that sort of thing. I like to play solo. I like to do my own thing. I'd... But uh, even if I group up occasionally, um, I got to know my role, whether that's DPS, tank, or healing, you know. Um, and your different sort of weapons will take on that role. And before you even mess with the weapons individually in their cases and see their abilities and stuff, you can uh, go right to your own information here. Um, for this, we'll go to this. We'll watch this first. Welcome to the Council of Venice Digital Archives and your online guide to surviving the secret world. The Ability Wheel. This is the Ability Wheel. The Ability Wheel is where you will train new abilities. Abilities are trained using Ability Points. You get additional Ability Points by gaining experience. When your Experience Bar reaches a threshold, you will receive a new Ability Point. As you train new abilities, you can drag these onto your Ability Hotbar. There are two types of abilities, Actives and Passives. Active abilities are triggered using keyboard shortcuts or by clicking the icons on the ability hotbar. Your passive abilities are automatically activated when equipped. Active abilities are linked to weapons. You must equip the correct weapon in order to use your abilities. You can equip seven active abilities and seven passive abilities simultaneously, along with two weapons. Keep an eye on your ability point counter. When you have new points available, you can train new abilities and expand your skill set. For more information on the Ability Wheel and abilities in general, please access the Council of Venice archives. Okay, so that was a little tutorial video on the Ability Wheel. We'll get to this in a minute. I actually didn't mean to come here. I meant to come to this screen, which is going to be another video. Welcome to the Council of Venice Digital Archives and your online guide to surviving the secret world. Character Skills This is the Character Skill Interface. You can train your weapon and talisman skills using skill points. You receive a new skill point when your experience bar fills up. Every weapon has two different skill paths. These will vary based on weapon type, although damage is always one of the two paths available. Distribute your skill points in order to focus on a specific playstyle. The higher your weapon skill, the higher quality weapons you can equip. You will also need to put skill points into your talisman skills in order to equip higher quality talismans. Whenever you see the skill point icon, make sure to open the character skill interface in order to distribute your new points. For more information on character skills, please access the Council of Venice archives. Okay, that's great. Um, Anyways, I meant to come here to show you that you can figure out which sort of weapons do what from here. Um, all you got to do is click on the weapons and you can bring them all open here so you can see what does what. And just at a quick glance, you can see that fists do damage and they do healing. Blades do damage and survivability, which is, um... You get more, you get like self-healing and defenses and stuff. More so than fists, which can heal others and everything. Um, and then hammers is damage and survivability. Again, these two are more tankish and this one's more like healing. Pistols, damage and support. Pistols do a lot of like taking buffs off of yourself and others around you and damage and support for shotguns, damage and healing for assault rifles, and so on. You can see right here at a quick glance. It doesn't give you a lot of details, but you get an idea. So if you wanted to, um, 
If you wanted to be a tank, for example, one of your good options would be a hammer or a blade or chaos. If you wanted to be a healer, a good option would be assault rifle or fists, that sort of thing. If you wanted to be support, elemental, pistols. You can kind of see here, just to get an idea um, of where the weapons sort of lead. As far as how to upgrade these, um, I believe, I could be wrong because I'm new, but I believe that each one of these is double of the last one. Well not, well, not double, I mean increasing in size. Like, this one's one point, this one's two points, and I think this one's going to be three, four, or five, and so on. Um, so you'll have to save up points in order to uh, increase these. Um, you can save up a total of 40, um, but you shouldn't have to save up that much. Um, but you get more skill points than just 40. It's just that you can save up to 40 at a time. If you save up to 40 and then you get your 41st point without spending before, that 41st point is just going to disappear because you need, you can only spend up to you can only save up to 40, but you can get way more than 40. You can eventually if you play this game long enough fill out everything, max out everything. But um, I, I'm just mentioning that because it kind of threw me for a loop because I thought, oh, you only get 40 points total. Well, you're going to have to specialize in like a couple weapons and your talismans and that's it. But no, you can max out everything. Um, obviously, the idea is you work on the two weapons, whichever two weapons you're going to have, and then you work on your talismans. Talismans in this game are the gear besides your weapons. Like they act as what armor would do in other games. Because in this game, clothing is just outfits. It has no bearing on your stats or anything like that. Um, it's the talismans that do that. and you get The different talismans give different things like attack rating or healing or crits or that sort of thing. Health. So you'll want to uh, be working on these as you get them. But usually talismans you can wait until you pick up a new talisman and you need the next skill in order to really focus on it. Because you'll obviously want to focus more on your weapons because that's where you do all your abilities, your damages, your crits and stuff. Um, but like the video said, you need to have a skill upgraded in order to equip the next level item. So if if you have if you if you find loot or are given or whatever, the next level of weapons, let's say you have a skill one here and you get a quality level two or whatever the, the thing is for the next, next weapon, um, you need to put a skill point in here before you're able to equip that weapon. Same with the talismans. If you get a second level, second quality level talisman, you'll have to boost up your skill to two and that sort of thing. So, um, but anyways, I just wanted to take you to this screen to show you that at a quick glance, if you ever want to know what one weapon d does um, in general, you can look and see where it leans. Now when you're playing solo, you want to have a sort of jack-of-all-trades kind of character. You want to have a character that has an AoE attack to, to uh, deal with a group of enemies all at once. Um, and you want a single target attack, usually for bosses or more harder characters. Um, you want to be able to have a self heal either automatic through passives or you know through some of your talismans give you like a heal rating that's an automatic heal outside of combat. Um, you want to probably have a defense of some. You want to have a jack of all trades to deal with most situations in the solo open world stuff. But then obviously if you're going to group up you're, with anybody else, um, you're going to want to be able to fill, fulfill a role of some kind. And that's where the weapon different types come in, like I said. Um, you could be a tank, you could be a, a support character, more like DPS or whatever, or healing or that sort of thing. Now the ability wheel here is going to be... I don't know. For, to me it was kind of overwhelming at first, 
kind of intimidating, and it still kind of is, I won't lie, since I'm just getting started in this game. But, um... It's not like you have, oh, two skills here, and then you unlock the, um... What is it, six more up there? No, you... You have, like, um, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... It's like seven... Seven things here, seven things here, and then... There's another seven here, 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 here. So you're gonna, even if you focused on one weapon only, and in this game you get two, but even if you focused on one weapon only, you're getting a lot of different abilities, a lot of things to choose from, and you only get seven active abilities and seven passives at any one time. So it can be kind of intimidating of like, which ability goes where and what synergizes the best and stuff, but, um, I'm sure you and I both will will all catch on as we play this game. So, what you uh, should probably do if you're brand new to this game is look over here to the Dex tab, and uh, let's start looking at some of the decks. Now, for since we're just starting, we'll look at the starter decks here. The starter decks are sort of pre-made builds. Um, they're not the best builds you can come up with. You can certainly, as a player, mix and match with other abilities and stuff. But they they give you a, a, a good idea of what you could uh, kind of like achieve or search for or that sort of thing. What they would help you get get you started on a good path to building what works and stuff, so you can get a better idea of that. And another bonus of the uh, decks is that if you complete a deck, if you get all of these abilities in this deck, then you'll get the outfit that's pictured, which is a nice little reward. But uh, you don't need to have any of these abilities equipped in order to complete the deck. You just need to purchase the abilities on the ability wheel. You just need to spend the ability points on them, on the, on the abilities in the deck. Um, so like if I wanted to go with this guy, the Cage Master, I would have to spin points here, 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 and if I got them all, I could claim the reward down here, and I would get the outfit, and you know any achievement or title, whatever other rewards might be in there. Um, but that's that's all it takes to get the outfit. You don't have to equip the the abilities or use them or anything. It's not based on experience in using the abilities. You just need to be able to unlock them. Um, and you can find out which specific abilities for which deck um, you should go into. You can find out which ones exactly you need to purchase. Let's see, for Cage Master, he needs one from here, and it's this first one right here. So I only need to spend one ability point for this if I was going after this deck. Um, one ability point for that, and then that part's done. And then I can move on to these here, and I need to get this one. And then these two here. And then I'll have to buy these because these go in order. You have you purchase one ability, then you unlock the next, and then you purchase that one, and then you unlock the next and so on. So you have to get all of these here. So it looks like for this deck you'll have to get this entire row of abilities here. And then work on this one like that and you can obviously you don't have to work on them in any kind of order you could start off with some of these go to some of these pick up this one along the way go to this one over here and this one over here but you can see the little circles indicate which ones you need to work on and work for to get to the different decks and there are a lot of different decks to choose from um, you want to focus when you begin on the starter decks and then these down here that don't say starter or elite these are faction decks. Depending on whatever faction you choose from, these will be different. I'm Templar, so I'm going to get these ones here. Don't worry about the elite ones yet. I mean, look at them. Keep them in mind. Maybe uh, decide on which one you want to go to, whichever one's closest to the weapons you've chosen and stuff. But don't worry about that. Those those come later because they have the expensive wheels um, on the outside, the expensive abilities. But then you can look through here, you can say, okay, I'm a Templar and I want to go for the Exorcist. So 
then you're going to get some abilities here, like you need these, and then you start need to work on the more elite abilities here. Now, obviously, in this case, this guy wants these, so we're going to have to unlock, even though he doesn't need any abilities in this area, in this portion of the ability wheel, you have to work through and unlock all of those and all of these in order to get access to the outer ring. You have to unlock whatever two portions, you know, for whichever specific weapon in order to get to the outer outer ring of it. So for this guy, we'd have to work on both of these and then start working on these. And that could be kind of an investment, you know. So you got to keep that in mind too. That's why I say for like the elite decks, um, like this guy right here, he's going to want almost exclusively out of the uh, outer ring. You know, he's only got one on, well, two on the inner ring here. So that's why they come later and you don't have to really worry about it at first. Um, what I would do from my research, and like I said, I'm new, so take all this with a grain of salt. Maybe I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. But my idea is to find a starter build, a starter deck that you want to work towards, whichever one it happens to be, find one that you like. It can either be based on the outfit or because it's using the same weapons you start out, you want to start out with. Whatever the case may be, find one that you want to work towards. Use that as a goal um, to achieve, to give you something to build your character off of. Especially if you're new and you don't know what abilities go where, this is going to give you at least a good start. Um, work towards that as one of the starter decks and then after you've done that when you're kind of in the mid game find one of these here that goes along the same lines and then start working on that and then when you're towards once you've done that and you're t getting towards the end of the sort of the I wouldn't say the end of the game but you know towards the later stages of the game then find an elite that you can start working towards along the similar lines if you can find one i mean sometimes you get weapon combinations you pick weapons that you want to start with that don't have any decks at all you know uh any of these pre-made ones i mean and you'll just have to make your own but these are good for giving you goals to achieve with your character building you know and like i said you get the outfits if you complete them so that's another reason to do that. And eventually, if you play the game long enough, you'll max out the entire wheel anyway. So it's not like you're wasting points. And like I said, you don't even have to equip the um, the abilities for the deck in order to get the outfit or whatever. You just need to unlock them. So you just need to spend the ability points. Um, but that's what I do. Anyways, I rambled on enough about that and we're new and we'll we'll get more into the abilities and stuff as we earn ability points and all that. Uh, for right now, let's go ahead and pick the weapons we're going to use. Now, you could spend as much time in here as you want to spend. There's no time limit or anything. Looking through the different weapons and stuff that you want to do, but I already know which ones I want to do. But we'll take a look at them anyways. Um, one weapon that I want to use is pistols. Pistols are light and easy to use, allowing you to move and perform tricks in combat. Damage, speed, and plenty of utility are available to the skilled pistolier. And this gives you another idea about the weapons that you're choosing. This one's good for DPS. DPS and support. It doesn't say support on here for whatever reason, but it's good for support too because you're going to be able to uh, eventually as you build it out do a bunch of cleaning and stuff you can clean off debuffs sometimes enemies will try to debuff you you know with different attacks and stuff make you go slower or hit less or whatever and you can you can cleanse that off you with the, the various pistol abilities and stuff so just keep that in mind um pistols have a medium range of 10 meters and it says access to support abilities so that's good and these are the two abilities that you get to start off with. These are the most basic abilities. So we'll look at that. And uh, we need to equip them, I think. So we'll go to inventory. Can I just right click, maybe? Nope. 
Okay, so bring up the character screen, and we'll drag the pistol over there. Then we can take the inventory off, and the stupid character thing off. Um, now we've got the pistols equipped. So this is 15 meters, so 10. This will allow us to target this guy here. And then we do like we did in the previous quest when we were in that dream or vision using the pis the shotgun. We attack using the number keys, you know, quick slots. So we have a builder with resources. And we'll get into this in a minute. This is the builder. Now the builder, every time you attack, it builds one of these resources up to five. Um, and these resources, if you just sit here and wait, they will disappear over time. But they build them, and on guns, they build it on the enemy. So when the enemy target thing comes up here, you'll see them over here build up. Um, for melee and magic, they build up on your character, for whatever reason. So, if you're using guns, keep keep an eye out on here see they just the resources just disappeared there um, keep an eye out on them here if you're using magic or melee then keep an eye out over here but they do effectively the same thing they build resources up to five no matter what weapon you're using and then you can use the consumer the second weapon and based on the amount of resources that you have built will determine you know whatever effect or damage or whatever that the consumer does so you want to keep that in mind. Obviously you want the maximum amount of resources you can get, which is five, if at all possible, before you unload your consumer. So we'll try this out, okay? One, builder, two builder, three builder, four builder, five builder, and the consumer. Your consumer is a big builder. If you ever played Diablo 2 and you had the Lord of uh, destruction expansion pack and you played the assassin this is a similar thing where you build up your charges and then you unload at the end one two three four five and the consumer just like that obviously when you're you know more into the game and into the actual combat and that sort of thing you'll probably want to do it faster but uh, yeah one, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Oh, I missed one, but whatever. And no matter what you're attacking with, no matter, like I said, no matter what weapon you're attacking with, it all works the same. Uh, melee starts with all of the resources built, so you could use the consumer immediately, and then go into the builder, and then use the consumer and stuff. But melee also, you know, you're using melee, so you're right up in the enemy's face and stuff. So it's good to hit big first and then go. Whereas with the gun here, or even magic, when, you, when you're at a distance, you don't need to hit immediately big. And I found out through a little bit of research and stuff that melee tends to, the consumers tend to often be like area of attack sort of things too so it's good to hit off with something like that and then get into the fray and everything you know so um but that's just something to keep in mind and for my second now i haven't actually used these because in my steamed high and dry video when i was just practicing and trying to get used to controls and stuff i ended up using blood magic instead but uh, through research and wanting to go um, along the lines of a deck build from the game. Graceful, balanced, quick. Attributes of all good swordsmen. With swift and precise cuts, you'll slice and bleed a demon or vampire in no time. Use your enemy's attacks against them and punish their recklessness and exploit your inner strength to heal and regenerate while you dance circles around your opponent. That's a key little line of dialogue there. Dance circles around your opponent. Um, blades, 
and pistols, from what I, what little research I've done, seem to synergize really well together because they give each other movement speeds. They give each other lots of area of a, uh, area of effect attacks, and they give regenerations and cleansing and oh, it's it's just so so good. Um, but you can see here DPS and tank. Uh, tank meaning that you're gonna get a lot of defensive skills. Like you're gonna um, you're gonna have abilities that let you charge through enemies and boost your like damage protection or whatever and that sort of thing so and of course DPS is gonna synergize well with our pistols which also give DPS the only problem with this is that it draws hate which is this game's sort of version of aggro I guess it attracts enemies enemies are gonna get really mad at you on some of the attacks for blades but since I'm playing solo anyway, it's not going to matter because when I'm attacking enemies, they're going to be coming after me anyway. There's not going to be anybody else. Um, but it does mean it would be kind of tricky if I was in a group, except for I just use pistol abilities more, or I would use blade attacks that don't necessarily draw a lot of hate. Um, but of course, melee weapons, they, they are short range. This one's only three meters from the enemy. But now we've got our blades, so let's go test them out. And as you can see here, the resources for the melee are built on my character, inner strength, inner, you know, will or whatever, versus the guns which build the resources on the enemy because you're basically putting bullets into the enemy, you know. Your, your magic power, if you want to call it that, your resources are the bullets, you know, they're, they're your anima or whatever is focused on the bullets coming out of your gun, so they're building up on the enemy, not you. Otherwise, you'd be shooting yourself in the foot to build resources, and that would be kind of stupid. Um, but melee, you know, the power comes from the strikes of your hands, not bullets, so the power is building up in you. And same with magic, because the power comes shooting out of your hands or whatever. Um, so anyways, let's go over here and let's attack, and you'll see. Now, because... Like I said, melee starts with all of your resources um, right at the start built up. It's like your first strike, you know, you've built up all your power, your rage, your whatever you want to think of it as. So you can hit with a big target first and then have to recover and build them back up and that sort of thing. It's a better way to look at it anyway. So we'll start with the consumer first, which is the second one. And then we'll build it back up. Oh, I'm out of range. I gotta be closer. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Start first with this consumer. Am I still. How am I still out of range? Let's try this guy over here. I'm literally up in his grill. I can't move any closer. This is weird. Okay, um. Oh, I know why. I wasn't targeted. <laughs> I forgot my guy was still targeting the guy over there we used the pistols on, so it's like, yeah, you're way out of range. <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep an eye on that. I'm, I'm still getting used to these MMO controls where you gotta use the tab and stuff to retarget around. Okay, so let's do this again. Um, God, I feel so stupid. But I am a newbie, and this is the Secret World newbie, so there you go. That's what you get for watching this. Uh, we'll start with the consumer. Second one. And then we'll go with the builder. One, two, three, four, five. And then we can use the consumer again. One, two, three, four, five. Consumer. Now you can use the consumer like on any weapon you have. You can use the consumer before you get to five. It's just going to be a little weaker. Like, I did this one. Well, actually, we need to use consumer first to get it out of the way. But one builder, two builder, and then I can use the consumer. But it's going to be weaker than if I had waited. So you just got to keep that in mind. And the, the reason that I bring it up is because you're going to have to get in the rhythm of using it, you know? And then there are abilities that give you extra resources when you finish them, um, which could break that rhythm. So that's something to keep an eye on if you want to use a certain ability you you got to realize if it's going to build resources or not so but anyways these are these are the two weapons that i'm going to go with because they synergize real well and also 
Damn it, and I keep bringing up the wrong one. Okay, here we go. We'll check out the decks. The starter deck that I want to go towards is the Maverick. And the Maverick uses pistols and blades. Um, so this is what we're going to be working towards. We need to get these here and these here. One's built up here. You can see the little circles. And then we need a few in the blades, not quite as much. And then we want one here, which is Lick Your Wounds, um, for the fists. Now, we're not using a fist weapon, but Lick Your Wounds is a passive. And you can use any passive in this game um, without having the weapons equipped. There are some passives that are only going to work if they have a certain weapon equipped, but you can equip them anyway, whether you have the weapon or not. They just won't work for you if you don't have it. But um, that's one thing that the game is not really great at telling you. You, you kind of either have to find out on your own or do some research or really take a look at the builds um, to realize that, to understand that, that the passives in this game you can equip as long, all you got to do is have them unlocked with your AP spending your AP to get them unlocked and then you can equip them and use them just fine it's only the active abilities that go in here that you have to have the right weapon to use or otherwise you just won't be able to use them um, so that's something to look forward to lick your wounds is well here we'll just look at it right here whenever you hit you gain a single stack of heal over time effect that heals for two every second per stack for three seconds. This effect can stack up to four times. So it heals two for every second per stack. So that's six over the three seconds. That'll be six. And it can stack up to four times, which means it can go to 24. I think that got changed. I thought it was only 12, but anyways, whenever you hit, you gain this heal. So as long as you're attacking an enemy, you're getting healed for whatever this is, you know, 24, I guess, <laughs> if you get it stacked up to four times. Obviously, at first, you'll be healing for six, and then you'll be healing for, uh, what is it, 12 or whatever, and then it'll, it'll go on until you finally get all the four stacks. But as long as you're hitting an enemy, you're getting this tiny little heal as long as you have this passive equipped. So that's something to look forward to. That's something to keep in mind. So yeah, this is the deck that I want to I want to build towards. I only need that one there, so that's only going to cost me one AP for that one. That's probably the first one I'll buy. Um, and then I need one from over here. This one is Elemental Force. This is going to cost me 1, 2, 3 AP because I have to get these two before I can get that one. And these are each 1 AP in cost, you can see. But I don't need Elementalism, the magic, in order to use this because it's a passive. So I can still be able to equip it if I want to and use it. Um, most of the passives, especially the beginning passives here, aren't weapon specific. In fact, I don't think there are very very many that are weapon specific. There are some passives that are ability specific. Like this is an active ability for elementalism and this one affects that active ability. It uh it it causes the next consumer to critically hit from using this ability here. It, it affects that. It boosts it in some way. So there are some passives that are like that, which means they're not going to be very good to you if you don't have the weapon attack, but a lot of the starter passives aren't. In fact, we'll take a look at that right now. Um, it's a bit off topic a bit, but whatever. So here, this is a, uh, Immortal Spirit. This isn't a passive. Um, Whenever you penetrate, you gain a heal over time effect that heals for 12 every second for 5 seconds. As long as you penetrate. Now, when you first start out the game, you're probably not going to be penetrating very much, if at all. 
What the hell? Hold on, guys. Oh, that was weird. Never mind. Sorry about that, guys. My phone uh, alerted me to an Amber Alert in some other town. So <laughs> that was pointless and weird, but okay. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Anyways, this would be a good passive to get if you have a build, any build, any weapon sort that is allowing you to penetrate often. If you've got a good synergy with penetrating, is that if that's one of the um, sort of... I don't know what they call it in this game, but like afflictions or whatever that you can you can do against an enemy. You know, there's critically hit, there's um, penetrating, that sort of thing. If you're doing that pretty often, if you if you notice it enough, you can use this and get a heal every time you do you do it. So that's something to look forward to. And like I said, it's not weapon specific, so any character, any build can use it. They just have to spend the one AP to get it. And then you go down here to this one, increases crit power by 15%. This is just a general passive that anybody can use and it increases your crit power so that's good to have and then we've already gone over this one which is to lick your wounds we go to this one increases damage dealt by damage over time effects by 10% so if you have DOT effects damage over time if you have abilities that do that if you do that a lot if you if you do that like every other attack or whatever this is gonna be helpful to you Whenever you hit a weakened target, there's a 33% chance to perform an additional hit dealing 12 magical damage. So if you have attacks that cause an enemy to be weakened, or you're with somebody else and their attacks cause an enemy to be weakened, this is going to give you an extra 12 magical damage a third of the time that you are attacking it. So every third hit. You're going to get 12 magical damage on top of whatever you're already dealing with it. So that's something to keep in mind. There's a lot of synergies. There's weakened. There's hindered. There's afflicted. Um, and then there's like things like penetration and criticals and stuff to consider as well. All different sorts of states and things you can do to the enemies that you attack. Mind over matter. Whenever you critically hit, the target also becomes afflicted with a damage over time effect that deals 10 magical damage every second for 5 seconds. So that'd be 50 damage. Whenever you critically hit, you get this extra damage over time. You combine that, the damage over time, with where was it? Increase damage dealt by damage over time, and there's an extra 10% to the passive that you just got here. So it would be 11 magical damage every second for 5 seconds instead of 10 just by having those two passives alone and if you have a character that critically hits quite a bit. We go over here. Now this is the AR, um, the assault rifle and the shotgun. These two have the first um, passives that are more weapon specific because you'll see here whenever an enemy dies with your shotgun resources remaining an explosion happens so you have to have shotgun resources on the enemy which means you have to have a shotgun and you have to be using it um, which means if you don't have a shotgun this isn't going to help you very much but these sorts of passives are kind of rare they don't happen a lot um, it's always good to look at the passives of every weapon in the game, try and find which ones you want to go after and which ones you can afford to go after. Obviously early on you want to focus more on your own weapons and stuff, but it's good to branch out every once in a while and experiment. Um, and then this one's for the pistols. Whenever you apply a hindered, you gain the minor critical chance effect, which increases your critical chance by 10% for 8 seconds. So whenever you hinder an enemy, um, you gain this little boost. You gain a 10% extra boost to your critical chance. So you're just that much more likely to critically hit them next time 
if you have this going. And this does, this is unlocked in the pistol area, but you don't need pistols to use it. It just, it, you just need to be able to uh, apply the hindered effect to the enemy. Some abilities can do that, some don't. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And then this is for the assault rifle. Um, this, of course, is one of those weapon-specific ones. Whenever an enemy dies with your assault rifle resources remaining, you gain a beneficial effect that causes your next assault rifle resource builder to build one additional assault rifle resource. And this, so this one right here even is going to be doubly complicated in a bit because not only do you need an assault rifle and be attacking with that, but um, your next builder is going to be building one additional resource with every attack. So instead of doing it five times, you're going to only have to do it three because you get two, two, and then the fifth and sixth one. The sixth one isn't going to count for anything, but you, you'll have to keep that in mind. So that'll kind of adjust your rhythm to the whole thing a little bit. Um, but definitely, through, through all this I'm saying, definitely keep an eye on the passives because no matter what weapons you use, no matter what build you're going for, you're not restricted to to your certain weapon types um, when it comes to the passives. When it comes to the actives, you certainly are. Definitely. And then, of course, you've got these miscellaneous abilities, but all of the miscellaneous abilities are unfortunately, as you see, on the outer ring. So you can um, get to them uh, without having to worry about unlocking the inner ring first. You can get to them immediately but they're going to be expensive. Like for here, for this miscellaneous, this is 9 AP. So you're going to have to save up 9 ability points in order to get this, which means you're probably not going to get this right off. You, you'll want to have some points built up in your weapons and stuff already because you don't want to sit there with the two basic abilities and save up your first 9 AP for this. <laughs> I mean, you could, but it's you're going to put yourself in a lot more danger than if you built up your uh, your own easier to activate build you know you build up your own weapons and stuff first and then come to this later but that's just something to keep in mind miscellaneous abilities aren't um aren't weapon specific at all whether they're active abilities or passive abilities or whatever they're their own thing um the only thing is that if you put an active ability on here that's miscellaneous obviously that's one less weapon specific ability that you're going to be able to use so you have to sort of mix and match with your builds and find out what works and what doesn't so uh, but obviously it can be it can be pretty overwhelming I mean we've been going on this for a while and I've just even barely touched <laughs> the ability wheel here but uh, suffice it to say I've done quite a bit of research I've looked into this and um, for me and my build and this character what we're gonna be playing out here in this series I'm gonna first uh, have this Maverick starter build as my first goal when I'm leveling up and, and putting in points and stuff. That's my first goal. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be using all of these abilities because I might mix and match with some other things or I might use this until I get used to the whole rhythm and everything and then mix and match. But um, that's going to be my goal initially to start with. Once we've gotten the Maverick done, I think I'm going to go work towards unlocking um, Paladin because the Paladin here, it's a specific class to the Templars, the faction that I'm in, but as you see, it's pistols and blades. So it's a natural extension from what I've been doing with the Maverick. Maverick will unlock a lot of these and um, some of these, and then the next extension would be the outer wheel here for the Paladin. And I might even work in, if I get the extra F, um, AP, I might even work in... Where is it? The Crusader? Because the Crusader uses a bunch of pistols, so obviously I'm going to be working on these anyway. I'll have this unlocked anyway. Um, the only thing is that the Crusader also uses hammers. So I would have to unlock both of these in order to get to the outer ring to get these two. So that, that'll that probably be after I get the Paladin done. But that'll be something to work towards. And then eventually my Elite ability, my, or my Elite deck that I want to go towards is going to be the Desperado. Because it too uses a bunch of pistols. 
and um, it's going to have a hammer ability, which I'm already going to have unlocked if I go after the Crusader. Um, but then I'll have to work on shotguns and stuff. But by the time I get to the Elite deck here, I'm already going to have... I'm probably already going to have the blades and the pistols maxed out anyway, regardless, or I'll be close to it. So it'll be good to put my AP into these other areas and branch out a little bit more than that anyway. But, um, yeah, that's just that's just an idea of the different steps you could work towards, you know. Um, now, from what I've read on the forums and stuff, the starter decks are good to begin with, but these, the rest of these, even... Well, to a lesser extent, the Elite, because the Elite's kind of like a good starter deck for when you get to Tokyo, which is towards the end game areas. Um, but the starter decks are good to actually not only build up towards, but use if you want to use and then experiment off from there. But your faction decks, I've read on the forums, aren't exactly that good because, as you see, pistols, hammers, and that's it. There's no miscellaneous, there's no extra thing over here or over here. It's stuck to right there and right there. And like here for the uh, Crusader here, there's probably one or two passives from one of these other weapons areas that I might want to have. Like, I don't know how useful Lick Your Wounds would be by the point of being able to get the, um, the Crusader here. But it's a healing ability, and it works every time you hit. So there's a chance that I might want to have it over one of the other abilities in here. So you got to keep that in mind. That generally, when you work towards your faction decks, um, you're basically just doing it for the outfit. <laughs> but um, at least for me personally, I want to go towards a deck that is a natural progression from what I've already been doing anyway. Um, Crusader's not too far off. The Paladin, especially, is a natural extension from what I'm already doing. Because it's already pistols and it's already blades. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up getting that deck and that outfit, even if I wasn't intentionally going for it anyway. So I might as well have it on my radar, have, have it to work towards, you know, so. But um, definitely experiment. If you're going to play this game and you're new to it and everything, the most you can do is use these decks as guides. Pick a starter deck that you like, that uses the weapons that you like. Um, for me, that would be the Maverick, like I said, and build up towards that. Once you have that, you'll have a steady working deck that you can go off towards in the beginning zones, Kingsmith, and maybe even the Savage Coast or whatever, because those are the first two starting zones that I know of. I don't even know of any others. Those are the only ones I know of. Um, but... Um, you know, you'll have a good beginning deck to start with, and then from there you can branch off and do different things. One of the one of the reasons why they say the starter decks that are actually marked starter are good for you is because, as you see, they do branch off, unlike the faction decks. They do branch off, like this one goes after the Liquor Wounds, this one goes after Elemental Force for whatever reason. So it does branch off of whatever the main weapons are, so that's... A, that's another reason why you should try and go after a starter deck if you can, is because the game will will build up that idea. It, it doesn't tell you immediately that passives work outside of your two weapons, but you can kind of catch on to that. So, uh, anyways, that's all of the really all of the information that I know of right now. I'm new to this game just as much as any newbie is. I only know this because I've done a little bit of research on the forums. I've watched my buddy Mindfiend play out the beginning portion of this game. So I have a decent idea of what's going on, but um, we're just kind of winging it as we go. So that's my plan anyway. Whoop. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to use, after all that's said and done, I'm going to use pistols and blades. So we're going to start off and re-equip the pistols. Pistols are light and easy to use, allowing you to move and perform tricks in combat. Damage, speed, and plenty of utility are available to the skilled pistolier. He's going to tell us about that crap again. When you have finished choosing your 
Have you finished choosing your first weapon? Uh, yes. Now, we'll go to the blades. It's that one here, right? Graceful, balanced, quick. Attributes of all good swordsmen. With swift and precise cuts, you'll slice and bleed a demon or vampire in no time. Use your enemy's attacks against them and punish their recklessness and exploit your inner strength to heal and regenerate while you dance circles around your opponent. That's great. Oh, and we get this. And this tells you about the builders and consumers and stuff, as you can see. Applies on your target, applies on your character, applies on your character. So all the stuff that I went through, and for quick notice, you can just look here on your quick bar and see which is which. Builders have the thing on top, consumers have the thing on the bottom. So, question is, what is this? Combine a single builder ability with multiple consumer abilities to maximize your effectiveness in battle. Strike a target with your melee consumer ability. Oh, this is an extra little thing I didn't know about. Well, let's do that then. All right, guys. I didn't realize we could do this, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's target this guy. Alright, so... Consumer ability, right? Um... Oh, that's for the pistols, okay. So we'll do this, uh, four. Okay, so we got that done. Refill your resources for both weapons using a builder ability. Okay, so this is teaching you basically how to do this, which I've already shown you, but we'll do it anyway. Oops. I've done the wrong one. I meant to do three. And you basically just build it up to five again. And I guess we completed that quest. Okay, that was good to know. I didn't even know we had that, but okay. Um, return to Brigadier Lead when you are happy with your second weapon. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Last time it kind of bugged out on me, and I'm not sure why. But maybe if we completed that quest, it's going to be good now. Finish choosing your second weapon. Okay, good. It did work. Here. You'll need this. It's how you get your instructions and submit your reports. Don't go off the grid. You'll find that nobody here likes a loose cannon. Go on now. So we get our first AP and first SP. And actually, we get two of them. Huh. That's cool. I didn't expect that, but hey, whatever. Um, so as you can see, even if we don't have the decks out, um, the game remembers which deck I was looking at last, which was the Maverick. So we can see if we wanted to, which ones we wanted to to build up here. Now it looks like I've already got a couple actives and a couple passives for each of my weapons. So I've got the Magnum, which is a passive ability for the pistol. And I've got Delicate Precision, which is the passive ability for the blade. Um, this increases the penetration chance of Delicate Strike by 10%, and I believe that's one of my things here. Delicate Strike, that's the Builder. So it increases the penetration chance for that. And then this, the Business, also causes the target to become weakened by a single attack of the completed effect, of the Corrupted effect, sorry, which reduces the effectiveness of Heal, Barrier, and Leech effects by 5%. Uh, per stack for 10 seconds. This effect can be stacked up to 10 times. So this is going to make make it harder for the enemy I'm facing to heal. Um, or to have better defense or anything like that. It's going to weaken it. 
and that's the business here and this is my builder attack there so we've already got a couple of things ready to go now which one do I want to buy next well I like I said um, I want to be able to get this one because then we'll heal automatically every time we attack so it costs one AP we've got two as you can see there and this again a maximum of 175 is what you can save you're gonna you're gonna have more than that you're gonna have looks like 525 but you can only save up to 175 at a time I don't know why you would do that um, you should only save your ability points enough to get whatever next ability you want to get because some of these have different prices like see this is 2 AP this is 3 or whatever so only save up to whatever you need to buy the next ability <laughs> and then stop saving it actually use it because you're putting yourself at a detriment if you've got a ton of ability points saved and you're not getting abilities um, anyways we'll buy lick your wounds so we can have some healing that unlocks the next ability um, now we are ha we have access to nurture but we're not gonna get that one because we uh, don't have the fists as a weapon so it's not going to do us any good. I mean, it would it would only do us good if we had to um, unlock another ability down here for some reason, but uh, we don't need to do that right now. So we have one AP point left, which means we can buy something else. Question is what? The next thing we've got here is cost two AP, so we can't get that yet. Whenever you apply impaired, you gain the minor penetration chance effect, um, which increases your penetration chance by 15% for 8 seconds. And I believe this is going to be the same where we're going to need another 2 AP to get this. Coup de gras. Whenever an enemy dies with your pistol resources remaining, up to 6 friends in a 5 meter radius around that enemy are healed for 44. So this would be good for if you're in a group setting. If you're even just in a co-optional setting with one other person, you know, and you're attacking. Um, especially if they're a melee character, because this is within five meters of the enemy that dies. So as long as you've got resources on it, so as long as you don't kill the guy, the bad guy, uh, with your consumer and destroy all your resources, as long as you've got some resources, then it'll heal for 44, your, your buddies or yourself, if you happen to be that close, maybe. Well, no, just your friends, I guess. I don't know whatever anyways it's a heal it'd be good to have in a group but we're not really in a group setting right now so whatever we'll get that eventually um, one, other one other option for us is hothead whenever you apply hindered you gain the minor critical chance effect which increases your critical chance by 10% for 8 seconds so there's that um, immortal spirit whenever you penetrate you gain a heal over time effect that heals for 12 every second for five seconds so this is another healing that we could have another self healing um, right now I don't know we don't have a lot of abilities so we we don't really um, have a lot going for us in terms of hindering or weakening or afflicting or whatever so Channel focus attack deals 47 to 70 physical damage per hit based on number of resources consumed. Single target attack deals 55 damage. Player based area of attack. PB AOA AOE. That's player based. That means it's coming off of you, the the area of attack. That deals 51 to 102 physical damage based on the number of resources consumed builds two blade resources if any affected targets are impaired so impaired is something we might want to look towards as far as an affliction goes um, but then this one here is hindered so I don't know but it's good I'm, I am glad that we have this ability um, this area of attack because we need an area attack as a slow player we're gonna be coming up with groups of enemies and it's good to hit them all with something so I'm actually really glad I have that ability right now and because it's a melee consumer we can do it right off at the beginning of combat 
um, before we have to start building resources again, so that's something to keep in mind. But what am I going to do for a second AP point? Should I save it or should I use it? I think early on I should use it because um, it's going to give us another ability and see we were kind of limited on on what we've got going for us right now so I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy this because it's part of the yeah this one isn't necessarily I have to build to get to the where I want on there this one is part of the deck that I'm going towards anyway so I'm gonna have to get it anyway if I want to get that and it's another heal over time. Now we're probably not going to penetrate a lot, but we do have blades which do penetrate sometimes, so maybe? I don't know. I don't know if penetration happens automatically, it's just really low chance when you're not doing a specific ability that boosts that, but it's a heal. And we have to get it for our deck and stuff anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and, and get that. So we've got a mortal spirit as part of our passives now. Um, and that is unlocked Blade Torrent builds one resource for each equipped weapon so it's a builder it's another player based area of attack frenzy ability that deals 27 physical damage the one thing to worry about this thing is that it generates a high amount of hate I don't know if this one does it doesn't say it does so I don't think it does but if we use this one, enemies would be more aggro on us. Which doesn't matter if we're playing solo anyway, probably. But there you go. Anyways, that's my choices for that. Let's go to the um, skill points. We've got two skill points to use. Let's go ahead and decide on which we're going to use for our pistols. We've got damage or support. Double up. Your pistol abilities have a 6% chance to deal an additional hit for 50% of the damage dealt. So that instead of 100% damage, they have a 6% chance to do 150% altogether. Because it's a bonus 50%. Um, or if we went with support, when deploying any pistol drone ability, your defensive target is healed for 2 every second for 5 seconds. We don't have any pistol drones right now, so it's not going to do us a whole lot of good. It will later, but not right now. And for blade... For damage, whenever you hit an enemy with a blade ability, you can you apply the two cuts effect. Hitting the enemy with a blade ability consumes this effect to deal five damage. Whenever you hit an enemy with a blade ability, you apply the two cuts effect. Hitting the enemy with a blade ability consumes this effect to deal five damage. So just basically extra damage, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's an automatic. It's an automatic extra five damage for that. So that's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, whenever an, for the survivability, whenever an enemy attack glances you, you gain 15% of the damage it dealt back as healing. Which means when an enemy glances you, barely hits you or whatever, um, you get 15% of that damage amount back as healing. So it's another kind of sort of self heal. It's 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 why blades are considered tankable as a character. Because it's an automatic heal. It's when the enemy hits you and glances at you. Um, and, and that comes in more handy when you've gotten some of the blade attacks that charge through the enemies. Because as you're charging through a group of enemies, they're probably going to hit you and glance at you and stuff. So that will come in really, really handy to have that, that healing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with the damage for the pistol because we don't have any drones yet. So we'll do that. Buying this will mean we get to equip a higher level pistol than whatever we've already got. Um, and as for this, I really don't know if I want to do damage or survivability. Uh, 
Um, consumes this effect to deal five damage, so it's an extra five damage every time. I, I might be using my pistols more though, so. Whenever an enemy gl attack glances you, just barely hits you, you gain 15% of the damage it dealt back. Which means it's not, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of healing, but it's not because glances are when they're barely hitting you. It's just, it's the first thing higher than a miss. So it's the actual attack, but it's really, um, I think I'll go with survivability on this. Because I really like the idea that I can heal. Yeah, we'll do that. And this will allow us to equip higher level. It doesn't matter whether you pick damage or the the second thing. You just need one thing in each in order to be able to equip um, the next weapon that you want to do. So we'll be able to equip when we get higher level weapons. We'll be able to equip them now, and that's good. So we'll go with that. We should be good to go now. When you're done, return to Richard Sonic's office for your first assignment. So we'll have to go back to the office now, I believe. But, uh, oh, we need to pick up the phone first, probably. <laughs> okay, we'll continue this next time, guys. Uh, this video has been plenty long enough, and uh, I've got some other things to do. I didn't intend to make this video this long, but we've gone through a lot. Hopefully it helps. I don't know. It helps me as a newbie to talk this stuff out and just kind of think out loud and plan things ahead, so at least there's that. Anyways, thanks for watching, boys and girls. I am the Giddle Gamer. This has been more of the Secret World, and I'm a newbie in it. Stay tuned for more newbie stuff next time. Bye! For now...